So three one two, what is uh, on your mind for the Saturday Night Firing Lines? Hey Douglas, how are you, man? Um, listen, I was calling. I was getting uh, my dosage of Douglas Dietrich this week, listening to some of your broadcasts, like uh, the Raw Feed, and with uh, I think it's Doctor Louise, a, a lady. You know, yes. you know the program I'm talking about. Yes, I do, Doctor Rita Louise. Okay. Rita Louise. Okay. Anyway, you said a few things in there that uh, caught my attention, and uh, I enjoy listening to you. But I wanted to challenge you on a few things, if I could. Okay. And it's a nice challenge, not a uh, confrontational or anything like that. Understood. Um, the first, the first one is uh, you mentioned something about subterranean uh, culture that's living mm-hmm. right now, which was the Third Reich. They're living mm-hmm. in a uh, subterranean culture, and I'm looking at it and I'm studying a few things on that. And are you saying that they're living beneath what's called challenger depth, or where would they be living? Because challenger depth, I mean, there's only two people, at least uh, in history that I know of, that has even gone to that distance, and they barely made it back from that. Nobody oh. else has ever been over at that depth. So where where's this culture? Where's this civilization uh, the, the, living the, if they're subterranean? No, thank you for asking. The original entry point, and there are many entry points, there are entry points into the subterranean depths of the Earth which are habitable. And I'm talking about certain places that are habitable within the um, what we would call – uh, now, if I remember correctly, because it's been years since I was looking at the diagrams of this, but I believe it is not even in what we would call uh, – it's whichever one is higher, the crust or the mantle. And Noreen will have to look that up for me because I tend to forget which one is higher. But when you think of the Challenger depths there, you're talking about the ocean. Now, the ocean, of course, is incredibly vast, and it is the pressures at those depths – which made it so dangerous. And you're absolutely right. The people who went down into the Challenger depths were in a submarine that was known as the Triesta. And the Triesta was, of course, uh, the commander at that time was someone named Picard. And that was whom they named Captain Picard after on the Starship Enterprise, the Next Generation series, was in honor of that explorer who went down to the Challenger depths. And what they saw down there was some cryptozoological phenomena. There are many interesting things that come with that story, but they went deep on a scientific expedition. They were one of the few people who went down there because it served no military purpose for military submarines to go down there. This is important to emphasize when it comes to submarine warfare. Military submarines are meant to submerge they're not meant to dive when in the military they say dive dive that means that they're diving deep to avoid surface tension uh that means troubled waters uh they can go deeper where it's calmer under the ocean or they can go deep to avoid uh radar etc but they're not scientific submarines they're not meant to go to the ocean floor they literally will suffer crush depth the scientific submarines like the triesta were almost so few and far between that they are truly exceptional to give an example of this the deep sea diving hard shell suits that you see in say for instance some of the james bond films or whatnot with the claws that manipulate things those there's only about a few of those in the world there are literally thousands due to uh, the Russians, the Chinese, the Japanese, the European Space Agency, the United States. There are thousands and thousands of people trained to operate an astronaut suit. There's only, the last time I checked, about half a dozen people trained to operate those hard shell suits to go underneath the water at a greater depth. Now, that is astonishing. We know less about the bottom of the ocean floor than we do about the surface of the moon. And that's not where the Reich is. It's not in the ocean. It's in, uh, thanks to Noreen, (laughs) the crust. It's at the very top. It's in the crust, what is miles down below, but is still within the upper levels of the Earth. It's deep, but it's not that deep. We're not talking about the burning core at all. We're talking about very large caverns. The caverns that they entered, for the most part, was through an entryway in the Antarctic, But there are entryways near the pole. There are entryways that are in Tibet. Now, some of the things that people have challenged me on is two issues. Why hasn't anyone else discovered these caverns before? They have. Many people have, but they made no use of them. And, uh, okay, we'll continue after the break. Do stay with us. Thank you for this question. We'll continue on it. 
Okay. Should be on. I believe we're on air now. I've made my plug for the station so that everyone support us. Obviously, we need quite a bit of it because every time Douglas Dietrich is on air and he starts talking about particularly sensitive subjects, often dealing with the inner earth, we get knocked off air. I probably get knocked off on air more for that subject than anything else so let's get back to it and finish that up and then we will try and rebuild the quay which we had uh at any rate um i do want to emphasize this about the, the inner earth now when i was working with the department of defense as a librarian i do want to emphasize that there was evidence even then uh coming into the public purview that the mantle which is the deep rock layers of the Earth's structure beneath the crust, probably contain, as a matter of fact, at this point in history, it is confirmed that they do contain loads of water. And by loads, I'm talking about L-O-D-E-S, the same term that is used for a mineral load. I'm not talking about load as in L-O-A-D. Now, loads of water exist in that mantle that dwarf the existing oceans. There is far more water under the Earth than there is above it. And where there is water, there is life, and water is corrosive. It eats and bores through mountains. It eats and bores through rock. And therefore, we have an enormous uh, skein, as it would be called, S-K-E-I-N, of caverns that run throughout the Earth. So the subterranean Reich is not beneath some certain place on the Earth itself at this point. It is uh, essentially a global civilization beneath the earth of extremely sparse population, very similar to the continent of Australia and the nation of Australia. They are two separate affairs. Australia is the only nation on earth that occupies an entire continent. The number of people on that continent are proportionately so small as compared to the number of people in other nation states that, um, comparatively speaking, Australia is still relatively underpopulated and in some uh, senses uh, throughout the continent unpopulated. So we have a situation similar with under the earth, small pockets of civilization, certain very large clusters. Uh, they are spread throughout the planet, and uh, we are under the impression that their population at this point in history would be little larger than that of the state of Israel. We're talking about basically around um, maybe around eight, nine million people at the absolute most, which is, you know, Israel has about literally uh, between five to seven million people. It depends on whether you're counting people who are of Jewish ethnicity or of Palestinian ethnicity who are working on a visa uh, or are given uh, Israeli citizenship, even though they are not ethnically Jewish. So depending on which statistics you're using, um, it goes between about uh, – probably around between six to eight million at this point in history. So we're talking about a population a little larger than that that is spread throughout the surface of the earth. And by surface, I mean directly underneath the surface in geological terms, geophysical terms, uh, miles below but still within the crust. And, of course, all of this is made possible through the amount of water that has carved out caverns that make up the inner earth through literally a series of sunless rivers and sunless oceans. So these caverns are enormous. They're hundreds of miles long. Uh, they're usually at least a mile from floor to ceiling in the more habitable areas. This allows for weather because condensation creates rain. This allows for plenty of room for travel, the expansion of civilization. Uh, the only thing missing is light, and that has been added by civilizations or at least cultures that have settled there, which brings us to who got there first. Uh, the Tibetans uh, had uh, really been some of the original pioneers to discover the complicated series of tunnels that led down into what is today known as Unterland. Uh, they manifested little interest 
in anything that they found. Uh, they were far more interested in a kind of psychic communion. And uh, this was something where it's claimed uh, an area where they learned levitation was beneath the earth. And uh, what is now known as Dumo Yoga, uh, also a development of telekinesis, uh, consciousness transference, the concept of bardo. Now, all of this was theoretically developed in Shambhala, which was the land below, in Tibetan terms, brought up into the surface by travelers who came back. Now, the reason for the development of all of these telepathic uh, mediums of communication was because of the lack of light and the ability to communicate or to uh, manifest one's survival on a normal physical level, as would be far easier on the surface world. There are just too many elements missing below, pre predominantly light. Uh, which make it, uh, which apparently uh, leads to quite an evolution of more subtle sensitivities that are undeveloped uh, in a world of comparatively constant light on the surface. So that was one of the original cultural forays during the Christian era. There was the arrival of humans, uh, but they were spasmodic. A uh, few had stayed. Some Vikings uh, came in by one interest or uh, entrance. Excuse my English. There was a group of displaced Hopi uh, by another. Uh, there was um, at least a party of Nepalese that was recorded by the Third Reich expeditions that uh, were mentioned in the records that the Department of Defense had accumulated at the time of the fall of the Reich in Europe. And uh, a lot of this was uh, taken from the uh, either the environs or the bodies in terms of papers that were found on their uniforms of Tibetan monks that were in Berlin that uh, killed themselves upon the arrival of the Soviets. There was a very heavy communication between the Third Reich and an independent Tibet that had been established prior to uh, the American entry uh, into the Second World War, uh, perhaps even prior to the Soviet uh, entry into the Second World War, which was around uh, 1939. So uh, that was the general situation for a while. Uh, the Nepalese, uh, it was found, uh, according to these records, uh, came with generations or arrived below uh, with generations worth of hashish, and they settled down to do uh, pretty much nothing. Uh, the Incas found the Assas route in the Andes. Uh, they quickly fled uh, with uh, mythologies that developed of snake gods and vampires. And uh, there was at least one seafaring Irish saint with a boat made of leather who had drifted in by accident and uh, misconceived everything as the entryway to hell. Uh, now, he drowned off the coast of Limerick on his return journey uh, before he could really spread word to what at that point would have been considered a higher civilization or a more uh, record-keeping or record-oriented civilization on the surface world at that point. Um, and the list really grows on. Uh, we basically, by the end of the 19th century, human traffic radically increased into Unterland. There were some English eccentrics who had made it into uh, subsidiary caves, but they never discovered any major underground cities. Uh, the Norwegian Nielsen uh, did two years later. The Prussian Erik von Stahlhein uh, came in with a well-equipped uh, expedition founded by the – or funded rather by the Krupp family. And then we had uh, basically – uh, because he returned uh, to Germany with uh, speaking of what he had seen, that was the preempting or the prompting of the – excuse me, the prompting uh, in the English language of the Nordic ski battalions and the SS Truppen that would later on enter and establish the way for the Third Reich, which arrived with bag and baggage and pretty much uh, warded off from that point on, uh, blocked off everyone else from entering. Uh, now, all of the governments of the world that are major powers know of Unterland. It's not a question of them knowing about it. Uh, they cannot enter because the Third Reich has basically sealed it off from them. It would be a state of war. It would be considered an invasion. Were they to enter, it would be the equivalent of communist China crossing the Taiwan Straits and attempting to invade Taiwan. So that is the situation as it stands today. Hopefully that puts that in some perspective. The caller who brought that up, uh, we've since lost him. 